kind of hectic. Yes, yes. Um, so it's mostly, uh, it's usually in this state of, uh, of disrepair where there's just pots all over the place and, and, uh, and bats and tools. Um, and I just go through a series of, of making things, drawing up uh, ideas and taking photographs and then photocopying past um, past uh, uh, shapes and forms. So right now I'm on busy working on uh, coffee cups and uh, and teacup saucers. Oh yeah, I see what you mean. You're really stylizing the handles. That's fun. That's so really fun. Trying to get a more of an interaction between the the coffee cup or the teacup yeah. the handle and the saucer. Yes. So a lot of the saucers that have been been that have been in the works have been. Uh, more like pillow forms. Sure. That yeah. Actually, stand well off the yes, table. Yes. Yes. Uh huh. And you've got With really thick bases and everything. Yeah. It's really cascading down, mm -hmm. much like bonsai um, forms. Well, I mean, I was commenting on the mouth feel too. I, that mm -hmm. that it's almost like a china cup in a way. Well, it is, you know, it is bone the old china. the old fashioned yeah. uh, uh, feel of yeah. a, a coffee are, cup that's long gone away. I might add in, in yeah. North America. You know. They are uh, they are bone china. They so, are. Yeah. Ah. So it is all high fire porcelain. Uh, Which also explains how you can get it so thin too. Then. Yeah, that makes a makes a, a big difference. If um, you hold it up to the light, it's actually yeah. Um, trans uh, translucent. Very cool. Transparent. Mm. Yeah, I haven't had anything in my hands like that in quite some time. They're, um, you know? they're quite a bit of fun. My t my teacher, he's a uh, Chinese Canadian, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and he has a very refined. Uh, line of work it's all very fine very thin but there's a rusticness about it yes yes and uh and i think I'm, I'm trying to find that same appeal where it's very refined it's a high craft but it's slightly rustic mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so i can show you outside most of the stuff that's uh, this is my drawing cupboard so it's stuff that i've been uh drawing over a period of uh you know, that i've made it last week um, and how long does it dry for it be, 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 before it hits the kiln? Well, before it hits the kiln, I would say two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. I let them dry really slowly. Mm -hmm. um, but this work um, I made about a week ago, and it's just waiting to uh, to be trimmed. So after I, I finish making it on the wheel, mm -hmm. it's uh, it looks like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, this is what the feet look like before they're trimmed. Mm -hmm. After... It, uh, a week we, or so, I we, put it upside down. And when when you say trim, you mean is it like a grind down that you do? I can or? show you actually. These are just about ready to be trimmed. So let me take you outside and, and show you what the what the finished work looks like. Um, but the, here I have all the coffee, uh, the tea cups, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. cup itself. Mm -hmm. These are the saucers, mm -hmm. um, and then the handles are here. Mm -hmm. um, and I can I'll show you if you. If you like, I can show you how these are made, mm -hmm. then how these are made, and then how those are made, and then um, eventually they're all put together. This is essentially just the clay, the same clay stretched. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you what they look like outside. And it's a porcelain grade clay, is that what it is? Or? It is, yeah, it's high fire porcelain, mm -hmm. so it melts at a very high temperature, mm -hmm. uh, or it fires to a very high temperature. So these are, these are, drying mm -hmm. um, they've been obviously they've been trimmed and the handles have been put on um, but they haven't gone through the first stage of firing the first stage of firing gets the clay to uh, vitrify it gets very very hard and can't be returned to a, a wet state again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, at this stage if we were to put this into water um, it would disintegrate and we could reuse it again and it goes into a slurry like this. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then from this stage, um, I would blend it up and put it on uh, um, sickle. Sickle. Uh, plaster, a mm -hmm. plaster surface to mm -hmm. get all the water to come out mm -hmm. and then I can mm -hmm. get it to a reworkable or a workable state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these are waiting to be completely bone, we call bone dry, so mm -hmm. there's almost no uh, water left. There's lots of chemical water in them, uh, but there, there's uh, most of the um, organic water um, is, uh, is has been gone. So this is essentially what I'm going for. These are the saucers. Yep. And that's the teacup. Very cool. And uh, and they look look like that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm for this for any show, any given show, um, I try to make um, 
about a hundred of one thing. Um, and the coffee cups um, can be anywhere from a hundred to three hundred. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm in a bit of a, I wouldn't really call it a rut, but I'm, I'm in a bit of a routine where I've been very excited about working on more sculptural teacup forms and experimental experimenting yeah. yeah so each one is essentially I, I feel like it's a sketch yep and we were yep. talking about music and how I was frustrated by not being able to hold the music and essentially I, I've been thinking of bowls as notes and then now I'm getting into arpeggios and, and mm -hmm. other other uh, other kinds of uh, what finger exercises Sure. Yeah. Eventually, getting into larger forms. I've been doing uh, seventy to ninety centimeter. Yeah, I, I noticed that larger uh, uh, plate there, essentially mm -hmm. like a serving plate or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, getting a little bit further, pushing the clay to its limits, and and getting it to flop over like a jellyfish or mm -hmm. like a tablecloth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, really trying to push the tr trying to push the uh, the, the porcelain to. Uh, to its uh, to its uh, ultimate capability, and me as well, trying to for me as well, trying to get it to uh, to do a little bit more than than what's expected. I guess there's also a certain magic to it as well. Whenever we've shown uh, working on the wheel, people associate it with magic that it looks really almost impossible to pull off, and um, and I think that's part of the appeal in, in doing this is that it gets people questioning oh, how was it done and how mm -hmm. it created. Mm -hmm. And I'm really trying to push that, getting it not only super thin and light, but also playing with that super light form and, and making it flower shaped and, um, you know, without using any molds, just simply yes. bringing it off the wheel using gravity and, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and just uh, gentle touches to, uh, to get it to, uh, to, get it to, uh, to another level. So each one of these, they're probably this cup just in a bone dry state is about 120 grams. Mm -hmm, so they're mm -hmm. really quite, they're quite light. Um, I noticed it immediately just in, just, just in the stuff that we had around the house, mm -hmm. you know, that did, because you know, you get used to a certain feel of a co coffee cup or coffee cups. And, to it, yeah. Robustness. Yeah. And I'm looking for that same rule. I'm looking for that robust character, but particularly with coffee cups, but with a refined, lightness as well and I think that's what, we were, what I was mentioning yes like finding mm -hmm. something that's slightly rustic mm -hmm. uh, but has a refined edge to it I like the fact of course as we comment on that that it's not 100% symmetrical mm -hmm. you know there's, yeah. there's a, it's that sort of off mm -hmm. kilter thing about it which is fun you know and to just make it uh, yeah. uh, each piece is is, uh, is original I mean it'll have a number of bowls that that look identical to each other on the, uh, you know, in shape and in size, but I've added little decorations or I've added some rippling on the insides to uh, to make it a little bit more appealing to uh, to the individual to to make it look like they're getting a one of a kind or really essentially giving them a one of a kind piece um, that they can uh, be pretty pretty excited about. I know we're we're very excited about what's been coming out of the kiln, and we were talking the last few days about how. After uh, dozens of firings, you get to know the kiln more, and it changes with time as well. The roof falls in, and mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the, you know, yep. it's you know this living and breathing um, organism really mm -hmm. swelling and you know expanding and contracting with heat and cooling down, and then that in a turn changes the shape of the flame, and um, it's quite fun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'll show you if you like um, how quickly uh, how one of these is put together. So, we've got two uh, electric wheels, and the wheels um, are uh, really quite quiet. Um, the first wheels that we had in the studio were very, uh, very noisy. And yes, I remember those because that's what I, I did it on briefly. Yeah. You know, in art yeah. school, we had it's like a sampler. You know what I mean? We yeah. would do this stuff, but it wasn't serious by any means. It's uh, it's amazing. The difference in the last year, I think, has made improvements in in the technology of uh, of wheels, and uh, they've um, they no longer have um, a motor. What is it called? A um, like a spindle. Bipolar motor. Yeah, there's no spindle. It's mm -hmm. it's all it's a motor that's about this thin. It's a wafer, mm -hmm. and it is about this big around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the torque is handled not by a cone mm -hmm. and belt, but it's handled by electrical current. Really? So huh. as I put more pressure on the yeah. wheel head, it recognizes that pressure and increases the current. 
and increases the so tension. The, the yeah, the tension and grab, right? It's crazy. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. Okay. So very quick. This is usually when I uh, when I get going, or sorry, before I um, make something on the wheel, um, it's important to uh, use these wooden dowels or wooden uh, bats, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, wooden die, and it makes taking thinner pieces off the wheel easier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do first um, is put down a, a pancake form that will, will be able to, uh, it will adhere the, the uh, die to the, uh, to the aluminum wheel head. So we have this form, um, it's still, the, the clay is quite tacky, so it'll accept this wooden plate very, very quickly, and it's almost impossible to pull off mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. unless we uh, wedge it off. Then we take some clay, and this is about the size of one of the tea cups. Just make a quick pull. So what you saw me doing before on the table is it's called wedging, mixing the clay to get all the mm -hmm. particles moving in the same direction. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's essentially a storm or like a typhoon moving. A grain. Oh, yes, yeah. mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. um, as well as trying to get all the, uh, the uh, air out. Mm -hmm. um, so it's essentially just a, a preparation, very much like making bread. Oh, that sounds so different than what I remember. <laughs> very, very quiet with the machines, very quiet machines. Yeah. So what we're doing now is called centering. Uh -huh. I'm using my hands to form it into almost like a tiramisu form. And uh, centering in the sense that it's uh, in as immediate center as possible. Flat on the top and equal on the sides. I'm going to use my fingers to go down the center. And I'll leave about a centimeter from the bottom of the pot to mm. the wheel head. Mm -hmm. Stiffen it up on the bottom to stop uh, stop the cracks. And we're forcing the particles to go in one direction, and, and uh, we're condensing those particles and, and making them really compact. Um, if we were not to uh, make a, a difference on the bottom, if we were not to put the same pressure on the bottom, as the clay shrinks, or as the pot shrinks, it actually goes in the reverse direction because we're going to actually bring it up and as it's spinning it, it'll be like a screw like mm -hmm. form or a twisting form. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you've got particles doing this and when it shrinks, or as it dries, it shrinks and it'll do a reverse hmm. form. Mm -hmm. And if we don't put pressure on the bottom here, then it'll actually create an S-crack and it's like tectonic plates trying to mm -hmm. force against one another. Mm -hmm. So we put more pressure on the bottom to stop that from happening and make it a, make a denser base and I'm going to squeeze on the outside and squeeze on the inside and rushing it you make it break Try that again. squeezing on the uh, outside and on the inside and get this to stand up is stuff. it difficult to find that, that that clay or is it a um, it's from Kyoto so it's uh, oh, it makes a, uh -huh. it makes a twelve uh, twelve hour journey yep. by bus, uh, but I uh, managed to find a, a local dealer about an hour from here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that uh, that carries it, mm -hmm. um, and it's a two. It's uh, after it's manufactured, most clays now are are manufactured from natural elements, um, but after it's manufactured, it's uh, it's. It, it's allowed to rest for about a year to two years. Hmm. So it uh, builds a lot of organic material. Hmm. And, um, to, it's a much rarer clay because it simply takes longer uh, for it to uh, for it to uh, be to for it to prepare. Mm -hmm. The organic materials, it molds and things that uh, can form the clay, help it to uh, gain strength. And uh, a lot of my clay is very, very mold. It's a, there's a, there are a lot of molds um, in the clay. It a lot just, of molds in the clay. Mm, so it makes it very, very strong, very plasticky. Form. So I'm using um, essentially metal tools, very thin, quite sharp. I've cut my hand a number of times. Mm -hmm. uh, sharp tools to uh, 
to create a form and, and to stretch out the clay just a little bit more. Um, as you know, with your fingers, you have fingerprints which act like grips. Yes. And as smooth as this clay is, your fingers do tend to grab the clay. Um, and uh, there's a fine balance between that as well as how much water you use. If I use too much water, then it creates a weaker mm -hmm. clay form. So I try to use less water. And in a sense, if I use less water, then there's more grip on my fingertips because there's less lubrication. So I use very, very sharp aluminum and, and stainless steel tools to uh, surgically, if you will, uh, form the, the pots mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, to a certain level. So the rim is probably about a millimeter thick, mm -hmm. and it uh, goes down to about the base, which is about three millimeters thick. It's, it's a fairly fine. And I'm just simply cleaning it up. So this is this is essentially what I'm working on right now. Mm -hmm. I've got about I've got a goal of uh, 50 teacups that um, I'm trying to have done for this uh, for the show in, in uh, December, along with uh, with other works. But this is my my mode of of working right now. Mm -hmm. I find that it's very difficult to uh, in one sitting do a number of different forms. I wake up in the morning and I'm thinking about teacups. I've had dreams about teacups <laughs> and uh, have different ideas running through my mind and go into the studio and, and work on them. Mm -hmm. and we have our teacup form. And to get off the wheel, I uh, take a, a strong wooden dowel or, just, uh, just or a wheel or a decompress board. it and off it goes. Decompress and off it comes. Yeah. Very cool. Then from there, um, oh, it's so thin, it's amazing. They, um, yeah, they get, I would say it, it's taken 12 years to get to a point where I'm comfortable enough with making them mm -hmm. thin. Mm -hmm. Then from there, um, so you can imagine, for doing the saucers, it's just, again, pushing the, yes. the form down mm -hmm. further to get it flat. Mm -hmm. So from there, very quickly, I stretch out clay, and this is making the handles. Um, and this does take a lot more effort. From the very beginning, it, it's really difficult to, uh, to get going. But essentially, what I'm going to do is stretch the clay down. And the lines that you saw in these pieces are created from the folds in, in my hand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they look like extruded pieces of clay. So they start. it starts out looking very raw. Mm -hmm. But very slowly, you can start to see lines. Appear. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. The trick with doing this is stretching the clay so it doesn't break and doesn't crack, but also has a consistent uh, look to it. Now, typically, in, in in British potteries, they would use their thumb, and to create this ridging, they would s literally score with their thumb pad on either side. Mm -hmm. If you look at really robust stoneware goblets or, yes. or pitchers. Yes, I'm, I know that feel. It's, there's a, there's a, a distinct uh, mm -hmm. uh, carving with, from the thumb. Um, and I actually don't like that too much. Mike. No, it's, 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 it's an acquired taste maybe. <laughs> there's yeah. a certain, certain realm of people who, who, who like that. I found it interesting. I myself didn't care to, to make it, but I did enjoy looking at lines and I thought if there was some sort of organic looking grip um, and something that broke well with the glaze, uh, something that made the glaze break nicely or uh, change color or change uh, appeal, 
then, uh, then I, you know, I was willing to or wanting to, uh, to try it. So from here, the candles are put onto a laundry rack, mm. courtesy of your local home center. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I take the uh, freshly made pieces and pick them up very gently and already you can see it starts to look like a handle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I add a couple of extra twists and, and bends to them and as it's drying I, I play with them a little bit more to get curves and, and things happening. And I lay them there and they sit for anywhere from 3-4 hours to 12 hours until they firm up and uh, get a little bit more, uh, more, um, more workable. Right now they're so soft that um, they would break quite easily. Y yes, I can see that. Um, okay. All right. So that's it. Cool. Very. Oh, one, one thing. I'll show you how these are done. So oh, two more minutes before uh, lunch is upon us. The attachment of the handle, you mean? Uh, yeah, or? the attachment of the handle and the trimming. Oh, the trimming, uh, right? So after. You saw the, how this was made. Yes. Um, I alter the rim a little bit and make it a little bit more wave-like, get some rippling happening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But essentially, after I take this off the wooden form, you know, after a period of a, of a week or a couple of days, mm -hmm. you've got your pot. I take a wire, a very fine wire, mm -hmm. trim it underneath, mm -hmm. take it off, mm -hmm. and it has a solid look, mm -hmm. of which mm -hmm. I like to change into a uh, more distinct foot or ring and I have a series of I can't uh, get over how the wheels change that's really amazing they're yeah they're, they're, before they were yeah yeah really strong. And, and also it wasn't it like when you take your foot off it keeps spinning for out for yeah, a, yeah 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 no they've really also uh, it really just just scallops off like that eh? well these tools are they're they're sharp. knives they're yeah. stainless steel uh, blades yeah. that I continually sharpen mm -hmm. um, and with a very fine touch and a little bit of pressure um, I can mm. I can carve it off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, please. So you hollow it out inside as well, so it's got that sort of right. So it's carved up, and I continue going until I've got this really refined mm -hmm. edge. Ah, yes, fascinating. Then after that, mm -hmm. um, the handle is attached, and and it's done, and it dries for another. Couple of days to a week. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's that. Cool. But it makes uh, doing larger forms, platters, and bowls, it adds a completely different realm to, uh, to making pots. Mm hmm. And the, how you handle them, you can see that these are bats, the same as the mm -hmm. wooden dials. Mm -hmm. I use these on the wheel as well for making larger, mm -hmm. uh, larger, larger platters and